August the 2nd, 2016. My name is Tanya Pincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University, and today I am in Harper County, the city of Laverne, or town of Laverne, to interview Wayne Sizelove. And this is part of our Cowboy in Everett County, so thank you for having me today. Let's start with learning when and where you were born. Uh, I was born in Woodward. Uh, 1947, June 29th, uh, our residence was in eastern Beaver County, uh, west of Laverne, between Slapout and Gate. I know where Slapout is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop for a photo there. Um, so you were, you were born in a hospital or at home? At, in a hospital. hospital. Brothers and sisters? I had, uh, there's four of us. Uh, all living, uh, two older brothers, a younger sister, and a younger brother. So I'm the middle of, of five kids. Okay. And what did your parents do for a living? Uh, ranch. Uh, I, I was, I was uh, going to say something cute like poor ranchers or something, but uh, they, they were, uh, my dad had cow calves. Yeah. Okay. He was with his dad, so uh, uh, that would have moved here from Illinois in the in the uh, around the I don't know the date, but it would have been been in the uh, uh, late nineteenth century. Uh, Part of the land runs around in there, and settled in. Uh, in the Gate Laverne area, went through the uh, the Depression years, and, and that's. Uh, but my my dad was uh, he was in nineteen nineteen. Uh, okay. So uh, my mother was in twenty three, I think, but she was raised here. So the they're both native. We're this is native home for me. Is the farm still in the family? It is. Original? I think my granddad probably lost a farm or two, went broke <laughs> probably uh, early there, lost part of it. But no, it's the ranch is, is in eastern Beaver County and it's a, uh, that's supported two or three families, yeah. And I wonder, is it a centennial farm then if it's? Can they, they they made, that far? I'm not aware that anybody's made any, An effort, any to, effort make. to make it uh, centennial. Uh, it might be. It just has to be in the same family that's, you know, for the hundred years. Well, it would be uh, three generations uh, for probably, yeah. I don't think anybody's... <laughs> well, what was his last name? Your grandfather was it Sizlow? That's that side. It's your father's side, of course. Yeah. Um, Frank Sizlow, then my dad. They called Billy was Ivo, Ivo Leon, and then the, uh, then there was four of us boys, and and the younger brothers on the ranch. Okay. And it probably does then, if someone has been there that yeah, long. Yeah, he's the youngest is on the ranch. And what was your mother's name? Mary, Mariama. She was raised, uh, she was born in North Dakota. Her dad was in meat inspection. Actually, he was, they were Kansans. Uh, uh, he was a K-State graduate. Uh, I guess what we talk about him was he was, he was a genuine K-State graduate on the football team and, and uh, several things. Then came to this country, uh, bought hogs and shipped them to California and elsewhere. And that's, then he got started in farming. And so he was, uh, he was the first uh, probably person in this area to irrigate. And what was his name? Uh, Jacob. Jacob. J.C. Jake, Holmes. H O L M E S. Yeah, and he, he was um, he was involved in conservation. He was on the soil conservation. 
uh, very involved in that early years. He was a, I'd say he was a conservationist probably, I, but he was a, he just a, a, a farmer, but uh, he kind of did things to me backwards, but made money. <laughs> <laughs> alfalfa, raised a lot of alfalfa. Well, he was the first in the family to go to college then? He would have been. Yeah, on the size loaf side, there wasn't any college graduates until my generation. So education was still important for the family, if, yeah. especially if you My mother family. didn't go to college. She married my dad when she was young. Uh, so all of, all of my family are, uh, are college graduates, my, my siblings. Julia's siblings are all college graduates. Uh, I, I was going to say uh, three of my two two brothers are OSU graduates. Okay. Uh, two of them are Panhandle uh, graduates. She has a brother that's uh, OSU. Yeah, so we have about. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, I don't know how you would, uh, as far as uh, how many generations or how distant you would go, but if you included all of our, Julia and I's, um, I call immediate family, which would be nephews, brothers, sisters, uh, our, our kids and our nieces and nephews. There's probably, and some of us have more than one degree. I bet there's over 30 OSU degrees. Yeah. If that's if that's important for that this is, discussion. That is, that's important. Blood yeah. runs orange for sure then in the family. Pretty much. Except your neighbor, your neighbor I noticed had OU. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little friendly rivalry there, huh? They're just football <laughs> fans. Yeah, that's okay. So let's, where did you go to elementary school? Laverne. Grades one through? Uh, forever. Uh, <laughs> we, we all went to Laverne. Uh, Were all 12 grades in one building? No. Uh, no, we had a grade school and then a junior high and high school. When I was in, we built a, Laverne had pretty good financial support because of the beginning with the oil activity, energy activity beginning in the 50s, uh, had some some funding and, and we had good facilities. Uh, it's a very large district, uh, maybe second only to Boyce City's district. So the large, a lot, most of the early days, every, uh, most of the kids were country, rode school bus. Mm -hmm. uh, not so much, I don't think anymore. Uh, but like, my parents are both Laverne graduates, and all of our families are Laverne graduates. If that's was the question. And what year did you graduate from high school? Uh, Sixty-five. 65. And the elementary school was just called Laverne Elementary. Didn't have a. a no. Another, it, another name. The uh, the only name that stuck to the school is the football stadium is Kilmer. He was our football coach. <laughs> Uh, but other than that, oh, I didn't finish. Uh, when I was in the seventh or eighth grade, we moved into this new high school, and uh, that that was a big deal. Well, how far was the school from your home? Well, seventeen miles we call sixteen, seventeen and a half. So you rode a bus. We rode a school bus, and and see, it picked up kids went fairly deep in Beaver County, well past Slap Out to Logan, and. And uh, some of those kids got on, you know, five thirty, six in the morning. That that may not be quite, but we we spent time on the bus, and it was uh, that was a part of our experience. Yeah. Well, did you have to do your chores before you got on the bus? <laughs> or, uh, uh, you know, in our traditionally, my dad didn't ask us to get up and chore before we went to school, but I did plenty after I got home. Or were some of the things he had you do? Oh, we milk cows. We'd uh, we'd milk cows and separate the milk. 
and the early days we'd bring cream to town and sell it. Uh, but uh, we got we had milk and eggs and and literally we'd slop the hogs, you know, with the with the extra milk and uh, then we'd raise bucket calves. Uh, uh, but we always had some hogs and, of course, the cows. I can... Uh, now, uh, we moved from the hand milking to... We had, we had a machine. Uh, all milking, I'd say, from the time I was in the fifth or sixth grade. Uh, and then... Uh, and that become a the milking cows become a burden. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they got enough oil leases or something. You know, that the finances were, were better. But uh, so he had mineral rights along the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that that. There was a lot of people that got a lot of good out of early leases and damages as much as from the actual production. A lot of our, our family and that was that helped people. Uh, even uh, not not even to the extent that we saw this last decade where it got so wild, but uh, yeah, it was all we had here. Have here is you know, is the energy production and and uh, ranching and and some farming. We're we're just on the edge of of uh, there's areas. That, that have very high, you know, productive land, but most of the irrigation is just a little bit north, a little bit west. Mm -hmm. But there's spots, uh, I mean, we have irrigation. Well, if he had his own hogs, would you butcher in the fall? Sure. For the family? Just for the family? I don't know. There's just, well, I, I bet we did do it in the fall or winter. Neighbors would come. That was back in the years when, uh, you know, your neighbors helped you. Uh, do a lot of it, and then you help them. And, uh, but we we did our own. Uh, we killed our own beef and hogs. Yeah. Do you have a freezer, or what, was it in town? Well, uh, we had a freezer. What I remember is we'd butcher it and let it hang there, and then we'd haul it. The 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 half a beef or so to the to the grocery here, and the butcher there at the grocery would cut it up for us. Now that would be entirely, that's not legal today. That couldn't happen. Uh, but we did kill it and uh, and skin it and, and gut it and everything. And you know, I, I never, I was, I was just, I watched. I never really. And it was just a way of life too. I mean, it's that was. We had, uh, it was always good to have a fresh side meat. That would be a, a kind of a bacon. Uh, have a smokehouse? No, uh, didn't do any of that. Our family, uh, Julia's family, was big in gardens. Uh, our family wasn't too big in gardens. We had some garden, but as far as milk, butter, cottage cheese, uh, we made a little soap. Uh, I remember. Uh, Beef and hogs had come. We probably, we probably had our hands on most of those before they, they were. Uh, what about chickens? Oh yeah, chickens, sure. You know, one of the things that did my grandmother, my dad's mom, uh, see they were there, and so you had your grandparents next door, and that was that would be important. The, that kinship relationship with your grandparents right there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, she uh, she pushed a lot of the the cheese and and the butter uh, and the and the making lye. So, uh, but but she was there uh, during all of those early years, and they were influential in our, in our upbringing. Did they get to discipline you, or was that your parents? Oh, I don't remember them ever. You did get in trouble, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's where you'd run and hide. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, 
but, but they were, they were people, both grandparents were people that were, you know, born in the, in the 70s, 1870s, and, uh, although my mother, she was raised uh, in town, they were in town, and they had indoor plumbing, and uh, she did, when she married my dad and, and went from their home in town to, to go to the ranch where there wasn't electricity, there wasn't indoor plumbing, she, she kind of stepped back to the, <laughs> when she started her, uh, the, our family. But electricity didn't come to, I think it would have been in the late 40s, early 50s. Uh, telephones come in the, I can remember that, in the, uh, probably late 50s, early 60s. Party, party lines? Well, before then we had the old, uh, I'm talking about a, a real dial phone, but uh, uh, yeah, we had the, before that we had the phone where you, uh, our number was short, long, and two shorts. You could listen to in. And oh yeah. <laughs> were and both sets of grandparents nearby, or just the? Both my mother's parents were here in Lone Fern, uh, so uh, the trip back and forth, 17 miles, was a, was a big deal. Uh, you needed a reason, a good reason, to make the trip, and then, and then, uh, even though gas was 25 cents or something, you know. Uh, so we had aunts and uncles and family and, and grandparents in town. So when we had school activities, we, we oftentimes just, I don't know whether we were invited or not, but that's, <laughs> we, <clears throat> we, but then as my older brothers, as, as you get in high school, uh, you gotta play ball here. So you had to have, be able to go back and forth from practices. And so as they got in school, they got the, had their cars, and so you had, had all of those experiences with whatever happens with the boys and cars and, uh, uh, you know, uh, like I, before I got my license, I, I had to get to town to practice, and I didn't have my license. Well, the city cop, he knew exactly how old I was. <laughs> and, and so I was on the edge of town, just barely in town. He, he got me. <laughs> so, just one time? Is that all it took? Well, uh, I don't know what I did after that, but that was, that was before school practice. Uh, I don't know, I guess we worked something else out. But he, he knew. He probably knew my birthday, you know. <laughs> but what did you play? All, all, of, all the sports? Well, I went out for all of the sports in band, FFA, in, in small town Laverne. You know. A lot of kids did everything. So you played baseball, basketball, football? Yeah, football. Good at any of it? Just, uh, I, I wasn't very big. Uh, I mean, no excuses. No, I wasn't the star, but I, I played, you know. I did my part. They, well, uh, how many students were in your class, just in your, in your grade? If they came from all over. Well, I think we graduated 48, mm -hmm. uh, pretty good sized class. And in the 50s, with the boom, they, people moved in, trailer houses, and the, and the drilling and things. Uh, it, it transitioned from the boom town was drill uh, people with the drilling rigs into the pumpers and the and uh, so they were more permanent people. But we got up to class sizes when I was probably the fourth, fifth grade, of seventy some. So it was, uh, and that that wasn't from from the cattle business. That was oil, oil and gas. Changes the whole makeup of town, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's been a big part of Laverne's 
what Laverne is about. Uh, well, were teachers pretty consistent? Did they come and stay? Oh, they was here forever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I had uh, a fifth grade teacher that taught my dad at another country school, but no, and all of us kids. Uh, Several of the teachers were our old neighbors, you know, in the country. Yeah, the the teachers were here forever. So if you did something wrong in school, your parents knew it before you oh, got yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, I mean, it was just I never thought about it being any different than that. Uh, we just didn't have any turnover uh, here. Uh, the faculty, the superintendent, was here for years. He, uh, it was a stable school board, never changed. <laughs> uh, seemed like, I mean, there's been periods now that it has had a lot of turnover, but uh, to see the 40 years that we, in our marriage, early there, uh, we were in Buffalo. So Buffalo and Laverne were rivals. Uh, so our kids grew up uh, Julie and I's kids grew up at Buffalo, and their rivals were Laverne. And they had cousins and things over here, and uh, we just, uh, uh, Laverne has a way of uh, kids being pretty, I think they're, it's just bred into them. They think they're, they're the best. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Not a bad deal, but uh, they weren't always the best that they thought they were. Well, what was the cafeteria like at the schools? Um, home, home cooked or? Well, they, yes. <clears throat> we had the same cooks forever, you know. I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't, didn't replace mama's cooking, but yeah. And, and I always ate at the lunchroom. You know, the big deal is when you got old enough that you could go across the street to the Tasty Freeze and buy you a 35 cent hamburger and french fries, you know. That's, he was really growing up then. But. <laughs> <laughs> and where would you get the money to do that with? Well, uh, that's, you could eat the lunchroom for a quarter, I think. No, I, it wasn't encouraged at our place, uh, but sometimes you figured out a way to do it. I don't know. Where did I get the money? I, uh, did you get an allowance or did you get paid for helping milk the cat, do your chores or? Oh, we weren't big on an allowance, but uh, early days we had a cow and a calf and we'd sell those. And <clears throat> so we had, we had some bank account, you know. Early? Well, mm -hmm. you know, when you was in five, six, seven, eight, I oh. think that would be right. You know, you'd have, and and you had your horse, and that was a big deal when, when they gave you your first horse, and uh, what was its name? But it didn't make any money. If that's what. Yeah, what well, your horse? What was his name? Your first one. Don't remember. Okay, <laughs> it'll come to me. <laughs> uh, huh. Basically, it's just sorrel mare. Uh, I mean, she would, She had a, a registered name. I don't know, but but the horses that we rode, which I, wouldn't have been mine, was White Sox and Brownie and and Duke and yeah, they we were familiar with all those names. Seventeen miles would have been too far to ride on a horse. Right. Yeah. Most of the I rode a horse uh, a lot when I was young. Uh, my brothers. Uh, by the time I was, let's say, eight or nine, ten, they, they'd go to the neighbor uh, around, and they got summer jobs, you know, they'd haul hay or move irrigation pipe or <clears throat> help farm. So they would got jobs to make money to buy their gas to, to go to town with, you know. Uh, and I was, was the oldest then, so I, I got to do a lot of the chores. In some, we're talking about summertime. And nearly every day I'd get on a horse then and uh, 
and ride to some pasture that might be two or three miles away and, and just I don't as I was thinking about that the other day I don't know what I did but I'd make sure that the windmill that they had water and see if there was something uh, I don't remember ever finding a sick one you know but that's that's what they sent us to do is go ride the pasture and uh, <clears throat> you know you had to fight the, the flies and the mosquitoes and the uh, <laughs> but but uh, did a lot of spent a lot of time on the horse, just you know during those those preteen years and early teen years. Yeah. Would you wear a hat? Typically, I must have wore. I don't remember. I must have wore something. Might have been just a cap. Have any issues with snakes? Incidents with snakes? No. No, uh, uh, not really. Um, well, since you were ranchers, you didn't. Did you have? You didn't do necessarily have a tractor. Well, we put up hay. Had a tractor that would uh, would have this grass meadow, or might plant a little bit of feed and and. My dad had this round baler, not the round balers that you know today, but small round bales, and they were unique. But we put up hay. That was the extent of our farming. Do you remember how young you were when you drove the tractor for the first time? Well, I don't know. Uh, about all they'd let me do is uh, drive the rake tractor. You know, after we didn't have swathers, it would be you just a mower, and then you'd have to to rake it. Uh, but I never did, by the time I, my dad never did let me run the baler, uh, or even the mower, I don't think. But he let me haul hay. <laughs> so so that, that was a, a, a big part of our growing up time, is hauling that hay in and stacking it. And sometimes there would be neighbors, <clears throat> uh, young neighbors come help us, and you get acquainted with them that way. Well, if there wasn't running water in the house? Well, we had water in the house then. In the house. We would have had water in the house in the early 50s, I think. That would, so I, by the time I was two or three or four years old, I think we had. Our, our house was, quote, modern. Okay. Uh, got, got a TV and when I was, I mean, in the house. We got, uh, you know, in the days when you had rawhide and uh, what were some of the others? So, uh, I bet when I, by the time I was six or eight, yeah. Drain that's the only one I, other one I can think of. <laughs> uh, was the house, house air conditioned? No, uh, we had uh, water coolers. Yeah. Uh, it'd be in the window. And they they were just a uh, a big basically a big fan that had water uh, uh, blowing through the we was dry enough you know where uh, uh, the humidity allowed to where uh, we'd call we'd call them water coolers. Uh, just a round thing that blow and blow a lot of, but at night you just open the windows, and on the, on the, uh, it's it was good to have a, a room that had a southwest window, where you got a breeze, but there was, there was times that, um, you know you get a wet rag and put on it, it but it, you didn't know that that was. Not, not good. Uh, in the winter time, <clears throat> we didn't have. We had these wall panel rays, and uh, I bet by the time I was five or six, we got. They had a gas well on our property, and part of the, we got free gas, so there wasn't any problem heating up the, 
the house and the barn and then chicken house and everything else <laughs> when we got free gas. But that, that was a big deal. Yeah. From That was a spin-off of the uh, oil and gas. Nice perk. Yeah. It's, it's hard. I don't know that you can get a lease nowadays that let you hook up to the well, could to the you, well. That's a, maybe a dumb question. Could you use it in your vehicles then? Well, uh, it has to be processed no, or something, this would it? be, um, now what they did, condensate, which would be liquid, because what we were burning there was a gas, uh, volatile. Uh, <clears throat> the condensate uh, would be at these tanks and they'd run these trucks around every while and pick it up. And it was, some of it could be high quality. It, it was not refined or anything. We call it drip gas. And there was a lot of people that would, I mean, they did it at night. It wasn't theirs. They actually just stole it, you know. But a lot of people, you, I mean, that was, you, that would be, when I say stole, I, I don't, know that people did that were criminals <laughs> uh, but they were uh, a lot of a lot of the old farm tractors and uh, and you could smell it it was different but drip gas yeah but uh, I don't I don't know that we ever so you, you had to certain wells really had really high quality drip gas if they were close to you, you know. But they'd go with their barrels in the night and fill those up. Well, it's never missed, probably. <laughs> never missed it. The, when, the, when the oil field people come to town, at first they were, they were the foreigners, you know. You didn't trust them. I mean, they were different. Uh, they just, and then pretty soon they were your best friends, you know. I mean. Literally, they were a part of the town and the community, and, and uh, you know they were they were good people. But early, I remember my dad; he didn't know whether he trusted those Orleys. <laughs> I, I should I don't know if that's really right, but uh, that was a little bit of my impression. But later on, they were always out there, stopped by for coffee, and some of them. Want to be your buddies because they they wanted to hunt or something, you know. But it helped you build fence or do do things, you know. And and then pretty soon, gradually, they become the native people. Mm -hmm. But at first, these people moved in from all over the world to take these jobs. But but then after a few years, why well, those jobs were taken by people that were local. Well, as you did chores and worked and went to school, what would you do for fun? But not, not practice for your sports, but what would you do for, for fun? As an individual and as a family, I guess. Well, you know, we, uh, I didn't do some of, some of them. Uh, you could fish or hunt or, I didn't do much of that. I don't know why. I would just follow my dad around a lot. Uh, um, I was interested in horses, and uh, so we we went a little bit to not really rodeos, but to a few events uh, with our horses. Um, um, but I I always liked to go with him when he go visit with people that we thought were really good with, you know, with horses, horse trainers. Um, but we were pretty busy by the time you played, particularly, they, my folks let me play a fair amount of summer, summer baseball, which would have been a big deal to get in town. Um, and then during the school year, there wasn't, uh, well, I went home with, with my friends, you know, uh, spent the night, but I, by the time I did much, I mean there wasn't. Well, did Laverne have a movie theater? When you were oh, there? they did. Yeah. 
early days. I rarely went to the show. Well, then the other option some people have done is go to a barber shop and play checkers or dominoes. Well, at the pool hall. Oh, pool hall, okay. But uh, yeah, we didn't ever go to the pool hall either. <laughs> when I I when I went to the pool hall with my friends, I was always <laughs> wondering who saw me go in. You know. <laughs> Uh, no, you weren't supposed to be there? Well, it wasn't, uh, you know, the, the smoke, the smoking and the, it was, not really, uh, but uh, that's what the older men did when they didn't have anything else to do. And some of them, I think, really enjoyed that, but I, I remember going in there, uh, there would be a pool table or something like that. I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, if you, if you were in FFA and you had the stock shows, that was a big part of our life. You had your show animals to take care of and, and, you, and you had the fairs in the fall and the, and, uh, and the spring shows. And, uh, uh, a little bit of going to the, a few, horse events. Um, Did you rope? Oh, I, I tried just a little bit, but not much in the arena. I mean, we'd rope. Uh, that uh, could be fun too, I guess. Yeah. In some, some we did. Uh, our family wasn't. We always had so many horses and we raised horses. Uh, raised a lot of horses and so it was always trading or trying to sell some horses uh, uh, well, and that was a big part of my dad's life. Is well most of his business for that sort of thing had to go somewhere besides Laverne for the horse business? I mean a bigger... Well right people come from a hundred miles around to, Here, okay. you know and they'd see the colts out there and they'd pick one out. And we uh, we always had two or three stallion studs, and we did a lot of, we bred other people's mares for them. That, that was a part of, a lot of the summer activities, is taking care of those mares and those colts. And so that was probably early days, my, my interest, and there's all quarter horses. And so I become a student early days of, of, uh, of bloodlines and, early day quarter horses and things. So your favorite subject in school would have been science? Or? Well, yeah. I, I mean, I was a science student. I, I thought about that. Early days, I thought, uh, well, from, I don't know why it was, but for me, with my mother, particularly, uh, if you didn't have all A's, it wasn't acceptable. <laughs> I, I said, I don't know. And I don't think it's so much on my older brothers, but for, so uh, starting about the fifth or sixth, seventh grade, if uh, you just didn't. Uh, there was no excuse to make a B. <laughs> uh, so what am I saying? I'm saying. Uh, Did you find out? Uh, <laughs> Did you make a B? I, I made I made a B in typing when I was a senior. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so when you asked me my favorite student, uh, my favorite class, I, I, if I you, you asked about sports, I I competed in the classroom. Uh, it was how do I want to say it? I I was pretty. Pretty much one that always wanted the highest score. Um, and I, I don't want that to sound, but uh, somebody asked me about, I played all the sports and that was really important to me, but, but where I beat everybody was in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And so the, the science classes were where I really beat them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for a while, uh, you're getting me to say things I, I wouldn't say. Uh, uh, 
So there was a time I thought about medicine, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, early, by the time I was a f sixth or seventh grader, I was, had decided I probably wanted to be a veterinarian. And so, so when I started school at OSU, I mean, I was in pre-vet and I stuck with it, so. Well, then, did, did you two meet before you got to OSU, or did you no. meet at OSU? We met at OSU. Okay, so we we're not there yet then. So when you came, when it came time to graduate from high school, was OSU the only school you looked at? Yeah, I know old, it's the only vet school in the my state, older, isn't it? My older brothers went to Panhandle, and that would have been the option. Mm -hmm. And and I could have, I don't know, I just, uh, that's where I was going. I mean, I didn't, I didn't. Well, had really it, ask. <laughs> I, I don't know. Had FFA taken you sure. to camp? To that, was, that was a big part of it, the FFA, yeah. And, and, of course, if you're going to go to vet school, you use the, and that's really not the truth, you might as well go there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and in those days, to get accepted into vet school, you, you probably needed to be a resident. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a little different now. Uh, so when you told your parents you were had decided you wanted to go to OSU, there wasn't any. No, issue. no. Uh, the ag teacher, I was probably helpful or influenced that. Uh, uh, no, they. Uh, uh, there was really never. A, well, how did you get there when you when you first went? Did they take you and drop you off? Or no, you I, I, I had my car. Took yourself? Had an old 62 Falcon. Yeah, I had my car and... Uh, they didn't go with you? Oh no, I didn't need them. <laughs> I, we left, the, we had the county fair going on, Beaver County Fair. And I left the fair, uh, got, took my animals home and jumped in the car and went to, lived in the East Bennett. Okay. Had a classmate that was my roommate that, uh, so that's where. Were you there this, all four years? Well, six or eight, I guess, but yeah. staying the same? No, no, no I, uh, I was only lived in Bennett for two or three months, and then as I began became acquainted. Well, I was already acquainted because these guys at FFA events and stock shows and stuff. Uh, a fraternity that was farmhouse or Alpha Gamma Rho. Alpha Gamma Rho. Yeah, that's that's emphatically Alpha Gamma Rho. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, uh, had they come to no. your home to recruit you? Well, not much uh, until I got to school. They had a little bit. Uh, I had, I had some uh, interaction with them at the at the uh, Oklahoma City Fat Stock Show, mm -hmm. and 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 then at the FFA convention. Yeah, and then I I had. Uh, my older brother encouraged me to, I, I mean, I have high regard for them, but when, I, when my grades were going to be all right, farmhouse began to look at me. Uh, but I'd already more acquainted with, uh, with AGR people. Well, I don't know about, is, does either one rank higher than the other? It's not a good question oh, to ask, I guess. <laughs> yeah, don't ask me. Don't ask, okay. No, they're, they're, uh, they're the two. So, so then, that really changed my my college experience. And your living arrangements completely. Different. Yeah, and so that pledge ship and uh, and then the activities in the house, and that's how. If if we're moving yeah. that way, Go ahead. she was a, a sister of a pledge brother. Uh, but but it wasn't until we didn't really. Uh, Actually, in the 
second or third year in vet school degree. Began to <laughs> strike a... Uh, and it just turned out to be coincidental that she happened to be from the same area? She's from Custer County. Oh, she's not, okay. She's from Arapaho. That's further south, right? Yeah. Okay. But she has, she has the background, the, the, she was on a farm and grew up, uh, uh, So how did you two meet? <laughs> uh, Put him on well, the I guess, I guess the real, uh, the first time we met is, is I was, uh, Rush chairman, and we we were having a Rush event in Oklahoma City, and it was important that I have a date. And her brother was the president. I just called him up and asked him basically if he could fix me up with her. Uh, uh, and that that was our first our first day. And then it wasn't until she was up there a couple of years that we actually began to... She probably had dates with half the people in the house before. <laughs> you know, no comment, huh? <laughs> uh, but uh, that... I would have never met her had it not been for her. Well, her brother must have thought highly of you to... Well, at least he did yes. He probably steered her away from a lot of the guys in the house, but... He didn't try to intervene, I don't think. <laughs> uh, so, so that was, yeah, that's a big, uh, big part of our OSU experience is, is Were you involved in anything ex beyond the fraternity, like <clears throat> the animal science or whatever? Well, uh, you know, I spent some time in the library. Yay! <laughs> uh, uh, I, I wasn't that involved in a lot of leadership, uh, which so many people in the house, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where it, it's so beneficial to be a part of those organizations is they force you or encourage you to, to be involved in, in some of those. But, uh, I was really involved in a a church group uh, that had nothing to do with well it was they called it Chi Alpha uh, so I, I worked quite a bit with that group uh, and then just several organizations but uh, not I, I, I wasn't uh, Besides the house. Um, well, that keeps you busy, from what I understand. Yeah. See, I, I was, um, was accepted after the, with just 60 hours after the first, a, after my second year. And a lot of, that wasn't unusual uh, then. Uh, mm. You could, you just had 60 hours of requirements when I was, uh, and uh, I, I don't know that the application pool is any different, but uh, and so then it was my third year in school, and that first year in vet school um, for me, uh, <laughs> it was it was a grind. Kind of tough, huh? <laughs> yeah, you had to you had to spend some time at it. And but I but I enjoyed it, you know. But. Well, did you was the vet library there, or was it the big library that you spent more time? Well, uh, you know, I if if you're familiar where the ATR house is located, mm -hmm. it was just a. Uh, I lived in the house, and that was somewhat different than a lot of the vet students. I stayed in the house for two more years, so that was a little bit of a distraction. Uh, but what I did is uh, we'd have dinner and and by 6.30 or 7 I could be at the library and and I usually had to take a nap or two at the library but by 10.30 I was ready to 
go back to the house. So I'd get two or three hours studying in, but it was at the Edwin Lowe where I, yeah. I, can, I could take you to the, my study areas. Uh, Which floor still, was it on? <laughs> um, actually, um, most of the time it is on the first floor or second floor, those large rooms with those big tables. Mm -hmm. I just spread things out. In the, I didn't go up to those little cubicles. Up. Well, I did some when it was, was cram time. But where I was, there'd be uh, classmates or people usually come by and, and they'd get me if I was napping or if I was studying there. And we'd, go to the, we'd go to the union and get a, a Coke or something. And those were our, our social times. Uh, yeah. Well, the union at that time had a bowling alley, I think, too, yeah. didn't it? I know, I, yeah, they did. Down in the basement. basement. I was rarely down there. You just go to the. Actually, I think we went to the fourth floor. They had a place up there. Where it's it's so much different now. Or maybe the first floor. Fourth floor had the Starlight Terrace. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it's fifth floor. Was it fifth floor? Uh, I don't know, but but that. They've remodeled it several yeah. times since then too. But that little and and. Uh, you know, except for times when the weather was a little tough, just that walk back and forth to the library was was good, you know. Uh, well, at that time, the library had the big car catalogs as you come up. Yeah. The big. You check. You check days. in and they kind of go through your. But you but you got acquainted with whoever's at at the. And the two booths or something by the doors, and and uh, hmm. those those were good times. Well, would you go to basketball games or oh, yeah. sporting events? Oh yeah, I went to basketball games, first wrestling matches. I ever, I was a big wrestling fan. Oh yeah, I went I went to most of the sporting events. I did. I I I flunked a, a path test one time when I elected to go to a wrestling match. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell your mother? <laughs> uh, you know, after a, after a while, and when you get accepted, and you get through that first year, the grades weren't very important to me. Well, I mean, yeah. You didn't want to retake it, though. Just no, I didn't. I didn't want to. A B was good enough, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah the B became good enough. <laughs> that was. That was, I didn't have to have it. Uh, I let my classmates make the A's. Uh, you know, it, I mean, yeah, I, it was, I shouldn't say it wasn't important, but uh, boy, for me to make A in some of those classes, I, I didn't wanna. <laughs> uh, that, that was, would take too much effort. <laughs> What did you do, small animal or large? Well, I, I, uh, they mentioned you did it all equally uh, as far as the class, but um, my special interest is uh, I went, I spent a lot of time at the postmortem room. Are you familiar with what I'm, that's where the dead, they bring the dead in, animals in and they do their autopsies and uh, necropsies and uh, that's where I, uh, and that's the people, the teachers that were there were the people that made me want to. Now, I'd, I'd go to work for them. I mean, uh, I never wanted to not have an answer for them. Uh, I, there's people still there, Pansiera. I've heard that name. Yeah, he's, oh, he was, I thought he was tough, but he, uh, you just would work for him, and uh, so. But but large animals. Uh, but you had to spend. You know, in those days, you had to wear a tie to class. You didn't wear boots. Uh, it's it's so different. Could you get by with jeans? No. 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 But. Uh, 
and then uh, the, what you get by with in class that it, when you we had these uniforms we wore in khakis that we wore in large animals you could wear those to your morning classes uh, before you went to clinics but uh, the, the clinics uh, if you, I don't, I don't know that I should say this on the, because somebody might see it, but the clinics were a disappointment for me. It just, they're better, I'm sure, a lot now. But boy, uh, if the diagnostics of the of, in the postmortem room just turned me on, and so, so that's where the minute I could escape the clinics, I went to the. For their rounds, yeah. If I don't know whether that was a question or not, no, but, it's uh, fine. Uh, so uh, and then large animals, and then so my interest was equine mm -hmm. and uh, and food animal, cattle, mm -hmm. and so uh, that's so I I I guess I look for some mentoring the people that were, that was highly regarded in my opinion in those, that to spend some time with outside of the classroom. And you graduated from when and what? From the med school when? Vet school? Uh, 71. The other name that it starts with a T, Totacek, Totacek? Totacek was, was uh, animal science, animal science. yeah. I didn't have a lot of exposure to him, but yeah, he was highly regarded uh, in the, uh, Well, was there a class you almost didn't pass? Oh, <laughs> the one that I kind of really let go would be Poultry Path. <laughs> and I don't know how I, uh, I didn't, I didn't invest hardly any effort to pass it. I just went to class. <clears throat> Poultry Path, and that was in the uh, last semester of the junior year. Uh, there would have been two or three others like that, but. Warning the chickens. No. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know wh whether we're moving that way or not, but what, when it's time in, in the last, in the fourth year of vet school, well then I, I discovered girls, women, and that, that kind of changed my life a little bit. Uh, but then the Vietnam War was, was raging then, and so <clears throat> you needed to decide whether you was, uh, how you dealt with that. and. I had a high number, lottery number, but then I, I went ahead and signed, actually signed up and was well along the way to being, uh, and then uh, I had applied to four, five, or six veterinary schools for internships. That was in the early days of, and, and probably, uh, I don't know, there, there would have been two or three people they're at the school, I suppose, would have helped me, but uh, I got offered a, an internship at University of California, Davis, UCD. I mean, and uh, that, was, that was way up there for me. So, so I accepted that and, and got out of the commitment to go to the Army. And so we spent we were just married and we spent our first year at Davis, California. And that, you talk about a learning experience. Yes. That was, that was tremendous. Uh, just adjusting from, from Stillwater to there too. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, the change of them accepting you as a, as a veterinarian rather than some student didn't know what he was doing and I discovered that I was had s such a long ways to go before I 
had the competency that I needed, and boy, I worked hard there. Uh, it was a, it was a great experience, and and that was in large animals, medicine and reproduction, and and they'd send us after we were there a while. They'd send us out with students, and for me to to lead those students, you know, I I don't think I was equipped for it, but you, you learned to, to make up for uh, what I didn't learn in clinics at Oklahoma State. But but the there was a difference between uh, UCD and, and OSU vet school at the time. I mean, it was, but yet, I don't know that it was, you know, at, at OSU, we would do a lot of our own. They just didn't have the money. Uh, at UCD, they had technicians that wrapped the horse's legs, that did up the surgery packs, that took the x-rays. At OSU, the students took the x-rays, developed the x-rays, wrapped the horse's legs, did the exercising. And when you get into real medicine, that's really, you needed to, I think we were better equipped than some of the, the uh, uh, California students that were, that were exposed to the giants in, in, in the world, you know, because they were just, it, all they did was watch and listen, you know, they didn't have to. Uh, so that, that was good, and I always thought that maybe Oklahoma State really did a better job of training practice ready for Oklahoma. Than, than maybe California, but California give you a, a different, the research expo exposure and a different, uh, yeah. Uh, but at any rate, then, then what do we do after that? Do you move on from an internship to a residency and the right thing didn't really come by that I thought, uh, and so I, I looked and inquired about some feed yard practices and then some equine practices. And then the Buffalo Clinic, uh, Buffalo Veterinary Hospital become, so I, it, it just seemed to me that's what I was supposed to, we were supposed to do is move back to our home area and so we come back to Buffalo and Never got a way to leave. <laughs> uh, and that would have been mid seventies. Seventy two. After you from Davis. Yeah, we just spent a year out there. A year there. there. And Julia, I think Julia enjoyed the the year there. She worked uh, for some Okies that were in botany there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then. Uh, what, what I, if we don't get to it, I, it would have been 25 years later, in 86 and 87, I don't just ran into it. We got the opportunity to go back and do a, a graduate degree, a master's. The, the veterinary medicine, even though they call it a doctorate, is not a research degree, you know. The, the actual medicine degree, even, even human medicine, you don't have to present a, a research project or a thesis or anything. So, uh, in epidemiology, uh, and, and California was, was way up there. In that. And so, uh, there was four people at the practice at Buffalo, and uh, so I just, I guess I told them I'm leaving for a year. <laughs> so we were, we got a little bit of a grant money and several things. Uh, lived in some homes that were sabbatical homes. Uh, but we had four kids at the time, from two to 10 or eight or something. And, but that was another good experience at Davis. So, so we got a, 
uh, I got a master's then that really I never did use. <laughs> but so I, I come back to the practice at Buffalo and spent the, from 87 to 2008 or something, uh, you know, at Buffalo. You retired? Well, retired. you know, I don't have a, a good answer. I mean, people ask me that and and I, I don't think I'm retired, <laughs> but I have made a real switch in my career. I still, still have, uh, haven't made an exit from over there altogether, but I just don't show up. <laughs> See, I'm not retired. And so, so I uh, always wanted to be a, the, the cowboy, you know, so we have, we're in the cow business. Bought a, bought a farm here and uh, so, and, and we have, we included family members to, to work. And now they're pretty well, they have it now, so. So how many acres are we talking? 160 or more? Well, yeah. here probably more. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I guess the farm south of town is uh, 1,880 acres. The big thing about it is it's most of it's irrigated, mm -hmm. and so that makes it a. And then we have another place that we bought north here, uh, so. It's it's fairly intense. It's stalker. So you still check to see how they're doing health wise. Well, uh, they don't they don't ask me too much. <laughs> <laughs> they they wanted to be to make the calls. So so I've I've got my own little project north of town. Yeah. Semi retired. Then. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but I still go, you know, check cattle and, and uh, every day, you know. Well, with that type of business, are you able to go on vacation? I know um, dairy cow, they say yeah. you can't too much, but. Sure. With the other. And we, you know, we, uh, we always had a multi-person practice before. And, uh, we were able to to get away, but it, uh, the the lifestyle is really, you know, it's you you share your time after hours, but so much of what we did is just long days, and that's how you made your living is you worked long, <laughs> so so you made you you made a little money because you worked a lot. Long from like six in the morning to ten at night. Well, that long I, long? that's that's an exact. But you could, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I overemphasize, but you know, from seven thirty eight, uh, a lot of times if you made a trip to, uh, it's some distance away to a feed yard or something, you might not get home until eight or so. So, so there was a time that <clears throat> I guess. Julia would probably say she raised the kids the most, <laughs> but but I uh, she says I missed out on a lot, uh, and I, I would have, but uh, I was around quite a bit too. So you had four, four boys, girls, three girls, and then and then the boy. Did any of them attend OSU? All of them uh, spent time at OSU. Uh, the two older ones have. Have degrees from OU in, in health sciences. Um, one's a physical therapist and one's a PA. No, OSU and, doesn't offer any of those, so. Uh, right. So uh, they're Aggies. Uh, <laughs> uh, Holly, the oldest one, she didn't get a degree from OSU, but all the others did. Mm. Yeah. Her her only degree, because you you weren't required a, a BS to to be accepted and uh, she did good enough to be accepted in two years so she didn't ever uh, but but she was uh, she wasn't really on the Norman campus she was in Oklahoma City 
Or are they their OSU fans or their OE fans? Or, OSU, yeah. Yeah. They could have gone wherever they wanted. Well, um, I guess. <laughs> we never had to cross that bridge, you know. But it was a natural, I mean, OU had the the schools for, for physical therapy and, and, the, mm -hmm. and the PA schools, so they just naturally. And that, uh, uh, does, does Bedlam come into play when it's, when they're playing each other? I wish you know you and your family. Well, I have a, I have a sister and there's some family members that are OU people, but not in our immediate family. No. No. Do y'all go to homecoming? Sure. That's a big event for us. Walk around and all that. Yeah. Well, when you were there, did you help make floats and oh, yeah. house decorations and all of that? I wasn't as good a help uh, as most of them, but I, I did, yeah. Decorate, yeah. The earliest house deck for, for AGR was when I was a sophomore or third year student. And we won it, you know. So we kind of got, the AGRs kind of thought that was what they were supposed to do, but you know, it cost them so much money and so much, I bet it cost them a grade point by the time they get through with that fall semester. They'd say it does more than that, maybe. Uh, it's, I don't know what's worth it, but that's part of the, the experience. I think they spend more than they're supposed to, all of them, not just yeah. you know, one in particular, yeah. but all of them do. It's what makes that, that homecoming, I, a lot of it, and I don't know whether people that haven't experienced it really understand that. Pumping? Yeah. I don't understand all of that, but I know it takes a lot of time and effort. A lot of, a lot of friendships and relationships are come out of that, I'm sure. You know, when they do it with a sorority or something like that, all the activities. It's uh, it's important to us, but uh, <laughs> from a distance, yeah. Uh, yeah. But did you go through graduation ceremony when you finished vet school? Uh-huh, sure. Yeah. Was that in Gallagher or in the football? Well, first of all. It was in uh, Gallagher. Inside, inside. A lot of things I, I forget about. No, we had our own separate. Uh, trying to think. We were one of the, the few colleges that walked across the stage. I remember that. That were the other colleges at the same time too. I uh. Did your parents come? Oh yeah. Uh, well, when you were going, did you? How often would you come back to Laverne or Buffalo when you were at OSU as a student? On week, every weekend, or once a month, or oh, just no. at holidays? Or no, we, we went to. I I really do think. I mean, we established a church home there, basically. I mean, we didn't necessarily have membership there, but. Uh, it, it, it was home, you know. I, now, I'd bring my clothes home when I came home and my mother would help uh, wash them and everything, but we did our, I mean, for the most part, did my laundry and... Uh, you did or you paid someone to, you did? Well, both, but, but uh, we'd take them down to that, uh, the jeans. If, I never did iron any, but... Uh, but uh, most of my underwear and things, you know, yeah, I, I know I washed them. Uh, I remember that first semester in pre-vet. The first time I went home, oh, I was I was tired, I was tuckered, <laughs> and went to a Friday night football game here. Uh, it would have been six or eight weeks though before I went. Went home. Before you came home. Yeah, I think that's to me. You go to 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 college. It's you need to move out. Uh, 
what would you call or write write letters or oh, just no correspondence. I, I learned to appreciate my my parents. I, I become better at writing uh, cards and things. Yeah, I, I'd write my grandmother and uh, and my and my and my folks. So yeah, uh, when I realized. I had something that I needed to appreciate and tell him about. So, yeah. But then, <clears throat> the first summer I was home, maybe even the first two summers. So I was back during the summer. But, uh, you know, that's, that's what I see. Uh, oh, I don't need to go there either, but when you go to a small school locally and you come home every weekend, that's... You miss out. Oh, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. And so those people down there uh, became closer to me, or I was closer to them than, the, than my high school classmates. Mm -hmm. So, and and... Basically, they still are, you know, yeah. Well, you mentioned Preston Jeans. Who would do that, the cleaners, or would, was there someone on campus that would do it? No, we, uh, when I was in the house, we went down there on, on Washington, down there, two or three blocks. Uh, there'd be a, I don't, I don't know whether they were, you'd call them cleaners, or, but they, they pressed our jeans, yeah. Had to be pressed. You know, that, yeah, I don't know what they do nowadays, but, uh, but the shirts were mainly kind of a, you just hang them up. I don't know that I had many shirts pressed. Or when was the pants pressed required by the house or just personal no, preference? that would just be. Personal preference. Had your mother pressed them growing oh yeah. up? Oh, yeah. Huh. With four boys, that took a lot of time. I heard yeah, word. yeah, she did it. Uh, not as much starch in them as they put them in <laughs> at Skidwater, but no, she did. Mm -hmm. And Julia continues to press them, so. <laughs> uh, it's uh, whatever you get used to, I guess, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, how would your mother do the laundry? Did she have a, a, a regular like, makeup oh, yeah. machine or whatever and hang it on the line? Or? Yeah. Uh, yeah, she hung them outside more than using the dryer, but we had a, I guess she had a dryer, maybe. Well, we had a clothesline. Made them stiff, nice and stiff. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those days, too. <laughs> well, you mentioned church. Was that important growing up as well as while you were at uh, Stillwater? What denomination? Um... Uh, Early days, uh, uh, the, the best description I could have would be a, it would be a Pentecostal church. Uh, then I started going. I just that's where I that's where I found the Lord, and that's where I uh, that's where I was saved. And so I uh, so some friends and I we we attended that. And so so when I went to Stillwater, I, I become involved. The Assembly of God, okay. Assembly of God, uh, and that's where, during the college days, that's where I, was, I attended regularly, and was a part of their their fellowship. And then, um, <clears throat> in our married life, we've uh, <laughs> been been uh, in in more than one fellowship, but we're in. A, we're Baptists now, <laughs> so. Uh, uh, but but it's still uh, our our uh, our spiritual fellowships a big part of our our life. Well, growing up, when it was Christmas time, would everyone come to your house or to your grandparents' house? Uh, oh, uh, 
I mean, we'd, we'd pass it around, but we'd always, we'd always have at least one day at my mother's um, parents, and then uh, actually uh, the size of the side was more at our house than because we had the bigger house. Mm -hmm. so, um, uh, any traditional dishes? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, for holidays? Yeah, like for Christmas or Thanksgiving. Turkey or ham? Or both? I uh, always had turkey. We had wild turkeys. We'd oh. kill them on turkey. Uh, but we had a lot of ham. That would be, I don't know which would be. We had plenty to eat. Uh, and did Santa come? Santa came. Uh, Santa was a part of our tradition. Uh, the, yeah, the holidays were a big part of our... Did Laverne okay. do parades or... Fourth of July or Christmas or anything like that. I don't remember when I was growing up that they did, but Fourth of July is a big celebration here, present. It's huge. What does it include? Well, you said parade, but they have oh so many events. It's about a three-day thing, all the way from golf tournaments to uh, volleyball tournaments to softball tournaments to uh, mud. What are they called? Mud races, and uh, I mean it's. A, uh, we have a, a son-in-law from Texas, Houston, that came and experienced our uh, our uh, our Fourth of July event here, and he 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 just couldn't believe it. Small town America. About how many is in Laverne? A thousand or? Were there more that much, or do you I, I, I believe a few more, but not 2,000. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably, yeah. Well, it seems it's, alive you even have a grocery store. Some little smaller towns don't. Yeah. The, uh, the hospital, which, uh, it's, rural hospital is a tough deal. Uh, is a buffalo, but they they have a clinic here. The same uh, uh, the bowling alley is gone, but there is a there is a theater at Buffalo, so we kind of uh, back and forth there. Uh, movie theater. Um, there's uh, as far as places to eat. I guess both towns have, they have enough, but you basically, to get a really good steak, you go out of town and go to Woodward or something, but uh, uh, there's lots of church events and activities. Uh, the uh, When school starts, that that pretty well runs everybody's schedule. Well, does the circus come through town? Not that I don't think anymore. I mean, it, it has car? happened, but no. No. Uh, Carnivals? Not really. I mean, it hasn't been that many years ago that I guess there would been a small circus, but no, that's not. Uh, I, as far as <clears throat> some of the men, uh, there's there's got nine whole golf courses at both towns. Uh, that's uh, that has not for me, but uh, there is at least one night a week. There's a little small rodeo for young kids at Buffalo. Uh, during the summer, there's uh, I, don't, 
Uh, there's, uh, it may be that the, that the teenagers probably think there isn't much to do here. Uh, Was FFA in the county fair still <clears throat> popular? That's in August. But like I say, once school starts, um, you're... Football, basketball, baseball. It's the, there's, and, and not only, not only the sports events, but there are, there are music events and, okay. and, uh, things. You just, it's, it's not, uh, there's no philharmonics in town, you know. Uh, you have cable TV for that, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. It, uh, well, you know, I bet there's more people than we think that make several of the Thunder games, you know. But, I mean, people, so people travel. Mm -hmm. um, but when you play ball here at the high school, you know, you might travel. 80 miles to play a game. So it, it uh, and that's such such a norm. It's not a not a big deal. Right. For this area. The uh, you know from from sealing the hooker, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, they travel those. To, so. Uh, I guess if you don't have kids playing, uh, you wouldn't travel like that. But, uh, but some people are, are passionately involved in stock shows, you know. They go almost every week to some, they call them jackpot shows, you know, pigs or... Longhorns? No, no longhorns. Long <laughs> But so there's, that's that's kind of that's kind of it's it's a lifestyle that's you know I if you lived in Stillwater what I can imagine is you still would have those events that we're talking about the FFA and things but there would be more to do <laughs> well not that much more though for teenagers. Teenagers just complain too. There's not enough to do in Stillwater. Yeah. But you know, for us, I guess I didn't mention that we make we got season tickets, football and basketball, and that's that's sometimes more than we need. I mean, uh, those night games in basketball, especially Wednesdays, huh? Yeah. Or Tuesday, Wednesday, mid midweek. Uh, but that that's that's an activity that we have that, that takes some time. And it took me about three and a half hours to get here from Stillwater. Is that about what it takes you? Uh, well, you went through Buffalo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's we'll, we'll make it. We'll make it in a short three hours. Okay. Just a long two hours. Yeah. Three hours. That's what it took us here. Yeah. yeah. Three hours. Yeah. Well, that is a long route. Six six hours in the car to see an hour and a half two yeah, hour basketball game. It's silly. Yeah. If they're women, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. But that's particularly if the game's over at ten thirty. Yes. Or ten. Does it start till eight? Mm -hmm. So TV runs our life, you know. When they play and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. So, but but that's that's important to us, and we meet family there sometimes. And you have two tickets friends. or four. Two tickets or four? Two, uh, two season tickets? Basically, we have, we share four tickets in basketball. So sometimes we have four and sometimes we have two. Uh, football, uh, I don't know why we do, but we have eight. <laughs> well, I know why we did, because there was a time when the kids were still in school or, or just out of school that we needed eight tickets. Well, with four kids, if they're all married, you need ten. That's right. And <laughs> and homecoming, but homecoming becomes about the only time. But they have to draw. Yeah. <laughs> or they can all go and and uh, tailgate. 
Yeah. And a few go to the game. We have, uh, the oldest is in Louisville, Kentucky, and then the next one's in North Dallas, Richardson, so, and then we have two families here. So not everybody shows up at the same time. Yeah. It's Louisville. <laughs> I know from Louisville. <laughs> well, it seems that once you graduate from OSU, people are pretty loyal to the school. Do you have any explanation for that? Uh, well, I really do think that the school means something to them. We have the joke, you know, that if you wear <clears throat> if you wear an OSU cap or an OSU shirt, you probably went to school there. If you wear an OU cap or shirt, you probably just come from Walmart's. <laughs> I mean, that's not a new joke, but but. Uh, and that's becoming less as they, I mean, we have more fans that aren't, that aren't students, I mean, or aren't graduates there, but <clears throat> without the football tradition that OU has had, it, it's, uh, you have to, I mean, it's, uh, I, uh, my passion for OSU is more than, than about the football team. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know whether that was going the direction that you asked the I question about. Because her. you met someone special there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was part of it. Well, uh, the people in my profession, that's mm -hmm. essentially... Uh, where I might have gotten acquainted with them or, or know them from, and all of that adds up. Well, you got married before you graduated, or after you? Right after you? Right after you graduated? The last semester. Last semester, you were, were you were in Bennett, and then you were in the house. Were you anywhere else? Uh, I lived outside of the house for two years. The last two years, and then. We were married the last semester, uh, so I lived, I lived on the, what was it, Sunnybrook or Sunnyside or Sunset. <laughs> Sunset for two years. Okay, that's close to within walking distance of. Right. Okay. It's close to vet school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right into campus. Well, and the, you said the Vietnam was going on during that time too. What, do you remember any events on campus? that was related to that? I don't remember uh, uh, students. I can kind of remember some uh, some students, we call them hippies or liberals, uh, voicing things, but not much. Uh, you know, the first time we really experienced that is when we moved to Davis, California. <laughs> uh, Mm. We saw a bit of it there, but the uh, revolt against our involvement uh, in a foreign war uh, or a whatever, uh, I don't, uh, we weren't engaged in it, yeah. I don't know that we totally disagreed with it, but we weren't, that wasn't. Were you in Roxy or OTC? No. The year I started, they quit requiring it. I'm, by one year, I'd have been in ROTC. Uh, no. So, so I don't have the memories. I don't have the legacy. I don't have the of, a, of having served in the armed forces and. I'm not, I'm not proud that I didn't serve. Uh, at the same time, I didn't feel the need at that time to rush over there and get killed in Vietnam either. But no, when you were doing something in on the home front. I, I was, I wasn't messing around. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah. So, uh, you know, most of the people that I, I went to school with, 
and graduated with uh, that didn't go to a professional school or something, didn't have the, the deferment, a lot of them went to uh, various ways. Uh, most of them were looking for the six month, uh, you know, where they just did six months of active duty and then the, the reserves. Mm -hmm. And then some of them, well, a lot of them, uh, sir. What was interesting, we come back from Davis, from California, after that year of uh, that internship, and we just had bought the clinic, the practice at Buffalo, and were had serious commitments there. And I was in Beaver County, that was where the draft board I signed up with. I, I got a draft notice <laughs> and I really thought you know after I bought this practice that I was uh, on my way <clears throat> uh, get to serve that commitment but but that it worked out that I didn't I don't know whether uh, they found somebody who took my place or or what but uh, but but military uh, service I didn't do. Uh, there was a lot in our class that, you know, served the two years and they were in meat inspection and I don't know that many veterinarians, we were commissioned, uh, I don't know that many of the veterinarians actually went, went to war, <laughs> but. Well, they needed more here, I would think, so. Yeah. The food supply, whatever. Well, you could have gone anywhere. You just chose to come back to Buffalo, Harper County. Yeah. Why did we come back to uh, Harper County? It's home. I'm uh, assuming, but yeah. And and I was somewhat thought maybe I could be involved in in the family ranch a little bit, which didn't really happen, but it was, uh, the family ranch being close was, was important. Um, I don't know, I knew something about this area and uh, it held some things that I was really interested in as far as horses and cattle. Uh, and then this practice become a, I don't know why, the two people had, had come and gone from that new clinic at that time at Buffalo that the that the uh, the local development authority had helped build had come and gone in three years that should have been a sign you know why uh, but we got it we got it bought cheap so we got you know we got started right away on our own and back in those days that was what so many of the classmates, we were looking to have our own business. I don't think students, graduates now, necessarily want to have their own. They, they just want, uh, they would prefer to be an employee than an employer with, with uh, the things involved in owning. It, it, particularly if they can get a, a decent income. But it, you don't find many of the new graduates, I don't think, that are rush up to you and, and want to work for you for one year and then buy you out. <laughs> and that's the way it used to be. Maybe their debt, student debt's too much. Yeah, student debt is, is, a deal, is part of it. Mm -hmm. Did you have scholarships or did your parents help or did you have to work your way through or what? Well, I was able to run some cattle at home, uh, had some income from, uh, and, and help. I think my, my folks gave me a hundred dollars a month or something. Uh, and I had, I had some small debt when I, but not. Not like what they have. Not like they, they, you know, they just make it so easy for, for the, 
people to borrow large amounts of money. Uh, they have nice vehicles. <laughs> they, uh, but uh, I, uh, in that, on that subject, I, I, I did. We didn't have huge debt. Uh, our vehicles were paid for, but that was some of that was help from our parents. Uh, but we were. It was easy for us to borrow the money to buy the the facility, and we paid very almost nothing for the quote practice, the phone number, the blue sky. You know. So we moved in there, and we got a uh, a good start there. Uh, and then after the the first year, we were able to get an associate from Texas A&M and that, that worked out good and then and so uh, the only way that we could keep people there to me was uh, once they worked there a while this is this is kind of my once they worked there a while and then they began to build their own clientele to me I they already had Blue Sky built in it and so essentially they just bought facilities and inventory. And, and so if they could buy in reasonably, rather than half million dollars of blue sky, then you could get, you could get the right people to come to small town Buffalo. But it's, that's not easy anymore to get a new graduate to come to the rural areas. So it's the same for vets as it is for physicians? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Or more so, yeah. They're, you know, they have the programs where they subsidize some of the student debt and will give you twenty-five thousand dollars a year or whatever it is to to move to a. Well, I can't understand. I'm I'm on the hospital board here. I don't know. I know more about that than than veterinary medicine, but they call Enid, Oklahoma, rural. <laughs> That, that's, that doesn't help uh, Buffalo, you know. No. Uh, no comparison. No. So uh, there's, there's just things like that, but uh, I'm sure in some cases it's, it's helped to get. Uh, well, someone was saying more, the, the student makeup has changed a lot too. It's more females going oh, yeah. into bed med than men. It's altogether different. It's, uh, and, and OSU would have been, uh, this is what I believe to be correct. Uh, I watched the graduation. I was more closely involved in the 80s and 90s uh, uh, when I spent time on on, on the uh, selections committees and, and different things, activities that I had, and I knew more about it, so I may misspeak, but it uh, looked to me like the the graduating classes last year might have been 70% women. Similar numbers, so that would be correct. And, uh, you know, it was that way in Michigan 15 years before it was, but, uh, and then they, they also have students from New York and California that have schools. Uh, and I, I'm sure that they're very qualified individuals. I don't know why they come to Oklahoma. Uh, it'd be because maybe they're not getting placed in, in their, but uh, they're not gonna, not many of those are gonna stick around to Oklahoma, are they? <laughs> I would not. Uh, and the women are, are great students and they're well qualified, but. Uh, sometimes they're not they're not enabled to go out and do some of the the tasks that that I did but maybe we don't do those anymore I don't know things are, are different like pulling caps or yeah. that type of thing yeah. I, you know I wouldn't necessarily want my daughters uh, I wouldn't recommend to them doing what I did. <laughs> uh, 
Well, they could do the pathology part. Though. They could do the pathology, and and they may. Uh, uh, oh, there's no reason why they. Uh, they're working in nutrition and, and pathology and all that. As far as being a, a, a consultant and everything, uh, they can be equipped to to be good and, and excellent in that field. Uh, basically, I was just referring to some of the physical chores that we had. That hard on your back, from what I yeah. And, and and not all of them want to be or or will be, you know, uh, working a, a companion animal, a, a small animal practice. You know. So uh, the, there's it's different. Mm -hmm. Well, what what advice would you give students going in? To OSU or thinking about OSU? Um, just as a, as a student for a general education? Uh -huh. it's, just, it's just a good place. I mean, it's uh, people are friendly, I think, and uh, looks to me like it's <laughs> uh, you know, if I was visiting with somebody, a small town person, uh, some some students from small town are, are frightened by the big city, but uh, although still water, uh, the traffic sometimes is makes me wonder sometimes. But it you can be comfortable there and enjoy it, and uh, it's. Uh, There's just, uh, whatever you're interested in, it's probably there. Uh, they, uh, uh, I think there's, uh, from a, again, from, a, from people from rural areas, there's, it's, I don't know why they would be uncomfortable there. Uh, and 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 you uh, and then it just uh, it is big enough, and there's there's enough of everything that it makes it. There's also the opportunity for a much larger world than. Then maybe a, a smaller campus. I mean, it's. Uh, well, I would assume you would recommend that they get involved with a organization, not necessarily a fraternity or sorority, but something. Uh, they need to. Exactly. I'll just use the the church. Uh, they need to essentially pick a home church there. That they become involved in and and know the people and those people can support them uh, and uh, not run home. Home away from home. Yeah. And uh, if you need to see your parents, sometimes they can come see you. <laughs> there's there's plenty of events there and uh, but. Uh, they, they, they just got to be happy as well as engaged in as a, as a student and uh, there's, there's lots of things there at Stillwater that ought to make most people happy I think and sometimes B is good enough <laughs> uh, <coughs> sometimes sometimes yeah <laughs> I remember uh, My my challenge early wasn't so much the sciences there, but this English class I had. Mm. I couldn't I couldn't write for this lady, <laughs> and I I made a C. It was my 
first semester. That's what kept me from being basically four point. Uh, but I could not, and it was really frustrating. And I didn't know whether to blame my high school English teacher or what, but uh, I, I didn't. I, I, I remember getting those papers back and it was almost like it was bled on, you know, it was had red ink all over it. <laughs> uh, so that was, you know, I had to get through that and uh, do you remember her name? Samsey. Yeah, I do remember. Huh? <laughs> Mrs. Samsey. You just had her for one class, or did you more than oh, that? Oh, just one. Just yeah. one. It, it. I. I got all my English in a five-hour, one-semester course, so it was every day, and you had to write papers once or twice a week. Now, when she would, when she'd get into some of the, the spelling. You'd get a you get a few points by she had some type of spelling and then uh, grammar you know where you put your periods and uh, I could I could get I could get my grades up a little bit but when I went to write she I don't know what she called all that uh, uh, <laughs> and <clears throat> and I don't know. Uh, you know, report writing in our profession is important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I began to realize how that, that your ability to, to write is, is a big deal uh, in our profession. And I, uh, uh, but at least I got, I got through it. Uh, but I never, did, I never did make her grade. Or was that class in the in the moral? No, the classroom building, the old classroom building. Okay. Just uh, one thing I had in moral was I took a reading class, speed reading class. Uh, I had had all my history and speech and English and history in in the classroom building. There's two classroom buildings now? We have, there's the one right there by the Union, and then they built a north classroom building. This is the one that's north the next to the Union, yeah. What, did you have a favorite spot on campus? Uh, well, you know, the house was close, but I never, I never uh, had trouble going to the Union. I mean, I mean the the library. I was comfortable there. Uh, you passed the fate upon on the way. Well, on the, on the yeah, east side, the yeah, between there and, and the Union. Uh, uh, but I, I found a lot of cubby holes in the library and in the Union to get off to study when I needed to. Well, when you were writing your papers, you was typewriters, wasn't it, or was it? Cursive. No, it's cursive. cursive. Not computers, <laughs> except correct, incorrectly at times. It was all uh, hand. Uh, trying to remember. I uh, often wonder what happened to her. <laughs> you know, and I, and I knew two or three people else that was in that class, and they could, they did well for her. Uh, and, and, and if I had other classes with those people, I could, I could, I competed well with the, the, with them there, but I just didn't. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I don't know whether I, I could have been taught better earlier or not, but I imagine I. I still would make a C in that class. If she was teaching it? If she was teaching it. Oh. <laughs> and how do you spell her name? Do you remember? M A, uh, oh, excuse me, S A M S E Y, I believe. I have not heard that name, so I'll have to look, look her up. I, I bet, uh, I don't know. 
And she was a missus or a, doc a doctor. You said missus, so. I called her missus. I don't, I don't know that she was a. You may just been an instructor then. Yeah. I don't know that she was a. a I, I bet it's so much different now with with technology and things, uh, the way you write and, and, and hand in your papers. and I mean, you really don't even have to go to the library anymore for your uh, material, do you? It's sad to say, no. But there's issues, there's so much information, and plagiarism is more of a problem than it probably was in, in your day. Yeah. Well, learning to use the library, uh, and when, actually when I went to Davis and I did that master's, they had one course in doing research uh, and all your bibliographies and I learned a lot there that I didn't pick up when I was, but uh, yeah, there, it's, it's my impression that you could be a, a successful student and not even go to class. You can pick all that up online. Not well, if your class is online, maybe, but not all, not every class is online. Some are face to face only. Well, in vet school, I mean, a lot of that's you can just go to your computer and, and get the whole. Look. I think you miss out on things, don't you? Oh, it can be the you same. You need that interaction. Uh, some of those big classes, maybe. Uh, I don't know, but just like the English class I was telling you, there's only, I bet, the 20 in there. And there was a lot of interaction. Uh, I imagine everybody in that class knew that I was struggling with, uh, but, and, and the math class was small. And, uh, but then you get to those large, well, I would assume that the vet classes were small. Yeah. Right. You knew everybody. There's 48. 48. Mm. It's about double that now, I think. Well, then you wouldn't know everybody. That's... Yeah. Yeah, everybody become... You know who... Where they're from. And they become... You spend a lot of time together. Uh, do you have a favorite memory, and we'll, cl we'll close out. What favorite memory of OSU, of your time at OSU? Making a scene, getting out of that class. Well, um, I, I don't want to beat this up. I don't know who watched this, but... Uh, uh, the friends at the house, and, and, and meeting Julia there and some of those occasions, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, <clears throat> then in vet school, I, I have some really good friends that, that, was, that, that, I, that I would trust and, and uh, would invest anything that I have in uh, at vet school. You know, when you, you're four years together with, uh, in, uh, in, in both of those situations, you don't actually pick all of your family. I mean, in, in, the, in the house, there's people there that aren't like you, and, uh, but you learn to live with them and tolerate them, and that's part of it. And, uh, same way in vet school, there's some of those guys that were different than I, but I learned to appreciate it and, and say love them, you know. Uh, uh, they, were, they were all good guys. I say guys because there was only four women in our class, but I, the women I, I know and appreciate just as well. I mean, they were, uh, there, so there was only four out of 48 as opposed to say 60 out of 90 now or something and, and uh, I don't think I could be as close to those women <laughs> as I was to some of the guys you know 
uh, I'm not answering your question really, but uh, the the vet school experience was good. I wouldn't want to do it again, but I wouldn't wouldn't want to give it up for anything. And uh, no, no regrets having gone to OSU to start with from the get go. <clears throat> no, if if I had any. If I was to do anything, I wouldn't try to get in in two years necessarily, and they're not now. I would, I would spend some time in animal science and be on the judging team, and, or, or try, uh, and and be involved in some, uh, be more involved in some of the the uh, leadership activities on campus. Try some of those that I I just didn't think I had the time for. Uh, so, but that, that adds, you know, if you put two more years on, onto your price tag of your education. Uh, so if you get in and get out as fast as you can, um, I just didn't have the capacity to, to do everything. <laughs> uh, and, you know, those first in pre-vet and then in the first two years of vet school, you needed to grind it out. After that, in the last two years of vet school, I, again, I, I discovered women and uh, <laughs> other... Life after class. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you know, yeah. But, uh, so, but, I don't know that I'd do a whole lot, but but I don't think you have to. See, I I never did work. I had I had one job there for a short period of time, bleeding mice. Uh, but I, that having a job down there would be an experience that a person probably needs to have, whether you wait tables or. Uh, I did. I just. Well, part of that too, though, is time management, and it sounds like you already had that that yeah. skill down pat. Well, and you're not juggling this. I didn't, you know, the guys played cards and dominoes and watched TV, and I didn't, I didn't do much of that. Yeah. Uh, early, anyway. Well, and you didn't have to cook cook in your room because the house had yeah a cafeteria, I guess. Did. <laughs> Or didn't didn't cook and and now that that first six months that pledging was uh, that that's different than what it was is now. I mean that that took some pretty tough. It was it was part of the experience. Uh, they you tried can't to say, I'm they, sure, but they tried to make it tough. Make it. Uh, build character, but I don't <laughs> But But it's, it's still a part of it that there's memories there. I think that's starting now. It seems to get earlier and earlier each year. They're already showing up for rush and pre-rush or whatever it's yeah. called. Yeah. But lots of, I mean, just so many people that you read about in the paper or you see here, you see there that that you can well I, I I had some acquaintance with them where I you know whether you really knew them that well or not I, that's that's kind of important to me mm -hmm. the connections well do you know the the words to the alumni, to the alma mater proud immortal uh -huh. bright shines your fame uh <laughs> OSU, uh, we herald your fame. Uh, you got me. I, I, uh, that's further than most people get. So that's well, I know good. what, uh, but I'm not. <laughs> Proud and immortal, bright shines your fame. Uh, I remember you, we herald your name is in yeah, there we, somewhere. Yeah. Loyal and true. Loyal and true. To our alma mater, OSU. There you go. <laughs> Do you want to take it from the top? <laughs> uh, you can 
say no. <laughs> oh, try it again, you mean? Mm -hmm. Is, it, is this a test? Or? Yes. <laughs> we want it on tape. Oh, there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The proud Annie. You may sing it? Sure. You do? I do. <laughs> proud and immortal, bright shines your name. Oklahoma State, we herald your fame. Ever you'll find us loyal and true to our alma mater, OSU. <laughs> this, uh, you'll be glad we did that later. You think so? I do. People will laugh at it. No. <laughs> I think it was great. Anything else you want to add before we close? Well, it's uh, if this is about OSU, it's, uh, and and not about me or Julia particularly. I mean, it's just it's a part of us that we wouldn't we wouldn't trade, and uh, we uh, we don't need. Oh, you telling us that we are one bit inferior. <laughs> uh, because we are not. So, so that little bit of pride doesn't mean anything. But, uh, you wear your orange shit proudly when you're out and about? Well, I'm not too big about uh, But, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think having... Uh, trouble finding people not knowing where we come from. Okay. That was my next <laughs> question. Okay. Yeah. I, I'd say that's... Uh, uh, yeah. That they know who we are. Concerning, uh, yeah, our, our allegiance to... Uh, and you know... Uh, It's sometimes I'll, people in Laverne, oh, uh, Laverne homecoming and Laverne, for us it's, <laughs> you got to drive 180 miles to get to where homecoming and our, our home team is, you know. But, but that doesn't mean that we're not Laverne Tiger either, so. We're just on different levels. Yeah. And Laverne is home now. Laverne's Consider home. home. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me here. It's been a pleasure.